and welcome back everyone to the Trek Yards Mission Briefing, your weekly Wednesday dose of Star Trek goodness, looking at a ship or station from the Trek universe, discussing, theorising, first looking, as it has been called, then asking for your opinions, your thoughts, your perspectives, and even some facts, even if you're the, de maybe the designer, you might come along and say, hey there, let me do another full episode on that later on down the line, but Stuart, what are we doing today, because I don't know. Well today, we're continuing our look at Starship from the animated series. Uh, this one's a very interesting one. This is from the episode How Sharper Than a Serpent's Tooth. Cool. Uh, we're looking at Kuklakan, uh, which is basically an ancient Aztec god. Oh, so that's a hell, of a hell of a thing to, to have for an episode. So we you know we have the the Apollo. God, how many how many gods are aliens? They re they keep interfering with our culture, <laughs> don't they? I mean, the ghoul from Stargate, and then you've got the oh jeez, yeah. they love us. I tell you. Who needs little green men when you have the, the gods coming in? Right, so, who wants to start with this one? <laughs> well, as you can see, it's a very cool-looking dragon. <laughs> Great summation there, Stuart. I love it. I know, right? Uh, this is one of my favorite episodes, personally, because it does tie in with ancient Earth culture, and I think a lot of the gods that you know we have worship could very well have been aliens. Who knows? Uh, ancient Alien Theory. I watch the show all the time, Ancient Aliens. I love it. Um, now everybody's going to judge me and think I'm crazy, but aliens. It was aliens. Everything was aliens. The CN was, Tower in Canada was built by aliens, I'm telling a, you. A, alien dragons or alien dudes in loincloths? Like uh, Apollo yeah, Well, the dragons told them what to do. So how's that? But anyway, let's get back to this episode. <laughs> so did um, you see this when it first came out? Or what, what do you remember any first impressions of this first episode when you were younger? Uh, don't remember seeing it when it first came out, but I know watching it when I was younger, well, I was probably in my teens when I first got the VHS of mm. this episode. And I thought that the, the dragon looked really cool. And it, you learned a lot, little bit about the Aztec Mayan people in the episode. Mm. So I'm a big history buff. So mm. to tie all that in together and have mm. a cool looking spaceship and all this at the same time, I thought was a fantastic way to do an episode. And I really well, enjoyed it. So. Well, I just had a quick skim through the, the pitch to actually remember anything. I do remember the side view as, as the only thing. It, it really is a dragon because this view doesn't really, doesn't really give away what it looks like per se. So two, two things I, I, I think of when I look at this, um, and they're both questions to you. One, you can see stars through it. Does that mean that it's translucent, or does that mean it's just a failure of the animation? Uh, I believe it's translucent. It's because it, it, there's a physical ship there, which we're going to look at in a second, but it's got like hollow projectors on it um, cool. to project whatever is in the mind of, you know, pull it pull it out of their mind and create whatever it's. Oh wow! Yeah. Well, I was about to say, second question: Is it really a dragon? I mean, is, is it an organic creature? Is it a spaceship? I guess you sort of answered that. Is it both? I mean. It doesn't look per se organic because the shapes are very, um, you know, they're not curved, but that doesn't necessarily mean you know, organic. It, it could be silicon life. I mean, a, a, a um, uh, tholian is organic, but it's yeah. not our organic. Well, in a simple answer to your question, Samuel, let's go to the next picture, which is a shot of just the ship without the hollow image of the dragon over front, over top of it. Uh, this is how huh. the ship would appear without any of the hollow technology showing off the dragon. Interesting. So, oh, oh! If you go back a second, you can see the ship yes. inside of it. Oh, which yes. actually makes more sense now. Oh, okay, so now whether that's a failure of the hollow technology, it was just not working hundred percent. But you kind of got this feeling uh -huh. there was something inside it, and that's how it presented itself to the humans of you know ancient huh. times. Okay, yeah. well, if we go back to the main ship picture, it looks like a crab. It looks very much like the Vulcan lander. Um, I mean, I mean mm -hmm. if, it's, if it's a ship based on holographic technology, I said, you know, it takes a lot of power to create a hologram. I'm assuming it would need to be pretty, pretty good. You know, it has a lot of hollow emitters, maybe all the blue, maybe both the, the extending parts are the emitters and the primary bit, and the wow. sparklies is the deflector. I don't, I don't know, it's, it's very strange. Oh yeah, if you look at, we'll just cover your, cover the rest of the ship and just look at the one side. Uh, it looks like a snake head almost with an eye mm. and like a bottom jaw. Um, mm. Now, I think from what I recall from the episode, Kukla Khan, if there's not people on board this ship, this mm. is an entity or the ship okay. itself has an artificial intelligence. Okay. Um, I believe there's actually 
mm-hmm. like a zoo on board that has different creatures and stuff from different worlds that is being taken care of inside the ship, if I recall correctly. So um, it's a Vija esque, Alice esque, Tin Man esque living ship AI creature thing. Somewhere yeah. in those realms, I mean. Yeah, let's go with that. <laughs> well, okay, so that's, I mean, it's a very, very odd shape. Um, I hope there'll be more pictures of sort of the side of it. Um, I don't know what to take from that. I mean, it, it, it okay, is it, a sh- it, okay, is it more a ship or more a creature that happens to have organic parts to allow for things to live inside of it? A la Moya from uh, Farscape, it's, it's a living beast with internal volume um or is it a a ship created and built with an artificial intelligence controlling it do you think uh i believe it's an alien um uh, somewhere on board the ship that whose ship resembles uh see i don't know i think it's an alien that's tied into the ship somehow I don't mm. really remember, to be perfectly honest with you. I don't know if the mm. ship itself has the intelligence or if there's an alien on board mm. that controls the ship as, like, one entity. Mm. Uh, but I believe it is an artificial construct as far as the ship goes. Whether there's actually still the alien that's in charge of it running it is mm. questionable. Maybe they died and the ship has taken on its own identity. I don't remember. Fascinating. It's a very good question, though. Um, I really need, need to rewatch the episode now. Okay. now. I thought I knew this ship, and now you got to <laughs> throw that at me. Wow. But if you, you mentioned yeah. the side view, so let's go to the next picture. Yes. And this shows off the side view, which is really cool. It's a really cool looking dragon. Yeah, it is. It's very much like a Chinese, you know, the, the classic, you know, Chinese New Year, you wave them around. I used to have one, yeah, actually. Yeah. Dragon. Uh, quite an elegant dragon as well, actually. Yeah, so uh, as I recall, the um, Ku Klux Klan was upset because the humans didn't remember who he was or <laughs> what kind of impact he made on their culture, things like that. So I don't know. If this dragon appearance sparked the Mayan dragon that we s- we'll see in the p- uh, next picture, actually. If you want to go to the next picture, oh, okay. it shows a picture from the, uh, oh. the pyramid that they get teleported to, uh, which is a Mayan dragon. Uh, uh, it's got and a <laughs> It does, yeah. <laughs> I never noticed that. It could be a horn. It's a hat. You, 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 know, it. you know it's a hat. <laughs> Uh, so I'm not sure if the, the dragon shape was there before and the Mayans created this creature based on it or if this creature was already established with the Aztec Mayan culture and then Kukla Khan took that shape. I don't recall. I just know that he does put the crew to the Enterprise to the test. Uh, there's a puzzle reg- involving the pyramid and the, the crew has to solve it so that Kukla Khan can be satisfied that the, the humans had not forgotten about him and all this. It was a interesting mm. little t- tale, so... So you're asking, is the was it a dragon first that the Mayans saw, or did the Mayans were they worried or scared of, of legends of dragons and therefore created something looking like a dragon, which was then the immortalized dragon that you think of based on this, you know, put it down on this parchment, whatever it is. Yeah. So basically, was Kukla Khan looking like a dragon when he came to Earth, or did he come to Earth and saw that their god looked like this and projected that image to mm. influence them? Well, his hat's, his, his hat's smaller on the ship, so... <laughs> That's oh, interesting. Samuel. Oh, well, you know. Um, okay, cool. I mean, it, I, I assume is it, this isn't a real Mayan thing, or is it very much a real image, do you think, that they just used? Uh, it's very similar to the real uh, uh, ancient Aztecs paintings and stuff, yeah. Okay. And if you look at their step pyramids, there's like a dragon or a snake going down mm. the stairs, and there's heads at the bottom of each stair. Mm. Um, so that so like snake gods are their their mm. thing because they were in the jungle, right? Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But this was Neat. a winged snake. Um, cool. So yeah, it's a, it's an interesting ship design, mm. and I don't know. I I wish I could remember. There's no crew per se, but I think there's one entity, and I think it is the ship itself. Okay. So there's still a lot of mystery around uh, who built it or whatever. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but definitely a great addition to the Star Trek lore. Mm. Um, next picture is just a great shot of it from the side again, more of a close-up view. So I'm trying to work out what is the actual ship because we saw the front view, which makes me I can see part of it and you can see like a, a, a 
a nacelle y bit sticking out of the top. I'm trying to work out what yeah. is the ship. It's all sort of integrated ish. But it's, uh, you can see bits sticking out, but it's, it's in, yeah. Yeah, it's got a little. Yeah, the, the, yeah. there's like a nacelle sticking out the back of the wing. There's the tail of the ship is the mm -hmm. top part mm -hmm. of the tail. Mm. Um, I wonder what it looks like from the side, actually. Do you have a picture of it ready from the side? Yeah, actually, I do. The next picture, if you go to the size chart, shows That's it from the side. Oh, one. Ooh. Huh. That's, Seven, inter that's interesting. 700 meters, so a little bit bigger than the Enterprise E. <laughs> yeah. Huh. That's really interesting. So it does still have a dragon motif. It does, yeah. Absolutely. Or or, or at least a... Well, I mean, Nacelle's saucer and the secondary hull just happens to be you know, a long, long drawn-out thing. Is that yeah. what you thought it looked like? I mean, I, I don't think I saw all that in the previous picture, but but now I'm sort of flipping between the two. It's certainly, I can certainly see it, actually. Good extrapolation. What do you think? Well, yeah, I saw, like... I can see the nacelle at the wingtip and then the tail part. The head part, I wasn't sure about because it's very, mm. it's not as clear when you go mm. back to the other picture. Um, mm. it's very cool though. Like, that's a really great shape, and it it's 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 not actually organic, which is interesting. Like it's very constructed, but just not how we would build a ship, you know? Yeah, yeah. Hmm. And it's very different from the way it looks from the front. Like you said, from the front, it looks very similar to the, the Vulcan's uh, ship. Yeah. The, uh, uh, yeah. T, T, T Plan of Hoth. Um, yeah. Well, if we cut back to that picture for a second, I mean, you wouldn't. This is a crab. And then back to the side one, that's a headless dragon with a sparkly face thing. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Oh, it's a very, a very interesting design. Very alien again, and that's mm -hmm. one of, the, mm -hmm. as I've mm -hmm. said in other episodes about the animated series, it's great that they could do that. Uh, they weren't limited by budget, really. They could draw what their imaginations envisioned. It looks very fast to me. Is that just me? No, it does. It looks, you know, that sparkly bit on the bottom at the front. Yeah. It could be a, a wheel. You could turn this into like a futuristic motorcycle design. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it does, exactly. it does look fast. That's what they intended. Beautiful. <laughs> well, if it visited Earth today, it would be look like a huge Harley Davidson. <laughs> <laughs> the front well, view has the handlebars, you know. You know what needs to happen? Yeah, exactly. Those wings, they move up. You have Apollo, who we know can, can increase in size. He increases in size, gets on the back, and rides the dragon. Two gods hanging out. There you go. Or just create his green self and have his green hands on the, on the handlebars and, you know, go for a spin. It's a hover bike. That's what. That's what it is. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it it is a big ship. I mean, this this implies technology, but what this implies to me is that in fact the race that built it was bigger. It doesn't imply that their human size or that technology is our style. Like any bigger race would need to build bigger technology, and they would build it in different ways. That's my interpretation. Like this, you know, if there's one person, he might be you know a massive, massive giant. I don't know what you think about that. That's just the take I have. Yeah, uh, I I personally don't think that, okay. um, but I can see where you're going with that. Yeah, mm. um, but personally, I disagree with that. Okay. Yeah. Well, discussion. I just wish I could remember if the ship was sentient or if there was one uh, pilot on board. Comment below. Tell me mm -hmm. what that. Uh, tell us how stupid we are. No, don't do that because that's not very nice. Mm -mm. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's go to the last picture, which is basically just the first time we get introduced to the ship. And mm -hmm. you can see the ship in the... I love that you can see the ship behind it. Mm. But yeah. And it gives it more depth as well without... Like, mm. that's a, yeah, that's knowing how it looks from the side now and how it's stretched out. It, yeah. It's quite a clever trick, actually. I mean, to think of it, to have, it, have a show, I mean, to do this in the 60s would be... would look rubbish. It, it, it would. Nowadays, yeah. a lot easier, but it would be very... It, I, I like this effect. It's kind of a, like it's difficult. To, I, I didn't know there was a ship inside it when we started. So I, I saw it as this big integrated wings and and mm -hmm. that, yeah. I mean, I, I vaguely remember the side from the show. Don't remember the episode for life of me. Again, it's not one of my my favorite treks, but I should go back and watch it. That's what I'm getting from this. Yeah, absolutely. I, I need to watch it now too. I should have watched it before we did this, but I just haven't had time. Well, we are and, working hard, and it is, remember it's a first look. So if you knew everything, it yes. wouldn't be wouldn't be as fun. So that's true. 
Uh, so anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed it. If you know anything about it other than what we've talked about, please put it below. Uh, I do remember the main plot of the storyline, but I don't remember all the little details, and I apologize for that. So I can't be perfect all the time, guys. Mm. I'm sorry. Mm. Yeah, it, it upsets Samuel, too, that I'm not mm. perfect all the time. Most of the time. But anyway, uh, you guys are perfect as our viewers. And as such, please hit that like button to show us that you appreciate what we do here. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Also, you need to be notified when things happen, yeah. all right? And things happen all the time here at Trek Yards. We're always, always releasing new content. So click the little bell notification and make sure you check the box that says you want to get notifications from us so you don't miss anything. But if you don't just want to watch the show, you can support the show as well. Because we have real lives and real bills and real things. But we love doing this. But we've got to have some fan support. There's two ways, either via Patreon, which is our monthly donation scheme. If YouTubers like us, because we are YouTubers. Weird to say because we do only Star Trek, is, but we are yeah. YouTubers. Uh, and, you're, and you can support us monthly. You know, $5, $10, the equivalent of like a cup of coffee a week. You won't notice it. And... You know, if enough of you support that way, it'll make a huge difference to what we do. And the more it mounts up, the more we can do. And that's exciting for us because we know all the designers, all, you know, it, never ending story is, is the story of Trek Yards as long as we have the fan support. But there's a second way, isn't there, Stuart, to help the show? There is, actually. And it's a very fun way because you get to check out some history on the commander and myself. You get to look mm. at, you know, who okay. helps yeah. us with the show, our ad admins and things. Hey, go ahead, head on over to trekyards.com. And uh, while you're there, there is a donate button if you want to do a one-time donation or, you know, twice a, twice a year kind of thing when, when you have extra money and want to throw it away. If you can't do the monthly thing, that's perfectly mm -hmm. fine. Uh, there is that option as well. So lots of different ways to help us out and uh, help us create content that you guys will enjoy. And hopefully share. Share this with all your friends and all the people that you know that love Star Trek. And let's yeah. get, the, get the word out there. Because we love documenting Star Trek history, and that's what I feel we're really doing, kind of immortalizing that uh, directly from the designer's mouths and whatnot. So anyway, guys, I think that's it for this episode, Samuel. So, I think so too. we will see you all next time. Uh, until then, live long and prosper and all that jazz. And we'll talk to you later. I'm Captain Foley. I'm Colonel Cookins. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody.